Welcome back. This is Danielle from Spore Yourself Natural. Today we're going to be making liquid soap and we're going to be making it with vegetable glycerin instead of distilled water. When using vegetable glycerin, it needs to be heated to over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. That way the potassium hydroxide can dissolve. As you can see right here, it tends to get very hot and bubbly. This typically does not happen very often when using distilled water. It's very sensitive with the vegetable glycerin. Just make sure to keep stirring so it doesn't foam over. And we are ready to put our lye into our oils. You're going to see how quickly this moves as opposed to when you're using just the water and potassium hydroxide. It can take from 10 to 40 minutes and this process using the glycerin speeds it up very quickly. As you can see this is going to be in real time how quickly it goes to trace. And we are already at Trace, as you can see. How cool is that? And we are getting to the taffy stage, not all the way there. but very close. Look at all the steam coming off the paste right now. You can see how hot it truly is. So now we are truly in the taffy phase. So this just needs to cook down. Typically my batch takes about an hour on low on the stove top. cooking for about an hour on low. It's 
nice and glassy. So we're going to pH test this, okay? So we're going to take not this much and we're going to do the clarity test. Okay, so we are going to take our paste We're going to dissolve it in some warm water. We're going to see if it's clear and then we're going to pH test it. So while I'm dissolving it, it takes a couple minutes, but look at the bubbles. Look at how nice those bubbles are already coming. That's typically a sign that it's done, but we're going to continue to do everything like we're supposed to. Okay, so you can see that the water that's in there is clear it's see-through it's not cloudy you can see all the bubbles now some people take an alcohol and rub it down but i don't want to mess with the ph at all so i just would rather them be there and then i did both testing and it's right on the scale and i did the digital as well i just cleared it off so we are good to dilute um, if you don't want to dilute it right away, you can just cool this off and you can store it until you're ready to use it. But I dilute everything right away for convenience. This particular recipe, it is a high olive oil content. When you have a high olive oil content and you use glycerin, you typically want a higher dilution ratio. So some recipes are one to one, some are two to one. Uh, this particular one is actually a three to one. So right now we have about a hundred ounces of paste. So we're going to add 300 ounces of water, which is about two and a half gallons. It's gonna get bubbly. It's okay, we can just spray some alcohol on the top if need be. And you're gonna save these containers. Um, what I do when I am done making the soap, I've let it sit, I'm gonna add my preservative and then I put them back in the gallon jugs. And I would leave it just like that and when I needed to make soap, I would just, um, add my scent and be done. It's my half gallon. just going to break up the paste just so it's not in large clumps if that's possible it just helps it uh, dilute quicker dissolve a little bit quicker than just being in one big chunk now I'm gonna spray it with alcohol just to get rid of all the bubbles you don't want the bubbles in there if possible I'm going to put your lid back on. I'm going to put it on warm for maybe like an hour or low, I should say, for about an hour just to warm the water up and then we'll shut it off and let it sit for 24 hours overnight. All right, so it's the next day and we are going to take a look at the soap itself. I had um, left it on the stove top on low for about an hour. And then I took it off the stove top, left it here, and I left the lid on the entire time to keep it nice and warm. So let's see if it's completely dissolved. And it looks like it is 100% dissolved. So sometimes you'll see little pieces of paste left and you can just let it sit for a little bit longer to dissolve. And here's the soap. It's like this pretty light amber color. 
and olive oil soaps or high content olive oil soaps I should say um, do tend to be quite thin so I typically um, will add in some xanthan gum to thicken it up. You could also use a salt solution um, which is a small amount of salt to distilled water ratio. I can put the ratio right here for you to take a peek at. Or you could use xanthan gum, you could use like a crawfix uh, depending on like what you're comfortable using. Uh, really any of those to thicken this up. If you used a different recipe with a lot lower olive oil rate and you weren't diluting it to say like a three to one ratio, your soap is typically a lot thicker than what you see right here. But I really like this recipe. I'm totally fine thickening it up because I do like the oil, the oils that I have chosen um, themselves. So what we're going to do here is we are going to add the preservative. So we'll do that right now. All right, so I have my container that I'm going to measure out my preservative. And for a liquid soap, there's only certain preservatives that work because it has such a high water content. Certainly do your research, figure out your recipe. Um, but for my personal recipe, I tend to try to stay more on the natural side. I know preservative isn't like natural, but it is always needed in a <clears throat> product itself. So I use the Uxel PE 1090. Um, I like this because it does not have any uh, formaldehyde in it, which some do, so I really like that. Um, I've tried a handful. This one's certainly my favorite for liquid soaps. Doesn't separate, stays good for a really long time, uh, and I get it at Lotion Crafters. So this is the preservative that I use, so we're gonna measure it out. Okay, and so when using this product, I use um, 0.5%. So I believe that the ratio is a half a percent to 1% of this particular product. I will certainly confirm right below for you. We're going to do two ounces of the Uxal PE 1090. Two ounces on the dot. And then we're going to add this in. And you're going to try not to kick up bubbles. It's really kind of impossible to do with the liquid soap, but you don't want to agitate it too much and actually produce bubbles. Um, you want to try to keep bubbleage down as much as possible. So we're going to add this in. And this can cloud up your recipe, uh, a preservative itself. And the same thing can happen with fragrances and essential oils. So all I do is I make my liquid soap, I dilute it down, I let it cool, I add the preservative, and then I store it away. You always want your liquid soap um, to sit for a little while, just like you would with cold and hot process soap. Um, so everyone's recipe is a little bit different. I like mine to sit for at least a week. And I leave mine just like this in the gallon containers until I am ready to make something. So, you know, it can sit on the shelf for months with no problem at all, but if you're scenting it and you're coloring it and you've added, you know, a thickener, that type of thing, it can affect the final product if it sits there for a long period of time. So I leave it just as is like this. And then when an order comes in or I want to make a small batch of something, I take the, um, you know, the base, I guess you'll call it. And then the first thing I do is add my essential oil. I will always add my essential oil first. I see how the blend works. Sometimes it can thicken a soap up, so you don't need a thickener. Um, sometimes it really thins it out. So I put my essential oil in, I blend it for, you know, a minute or so by hand, I see what the outcome is, and then I will decide if the soap needs to be thickened. You can use that salt solution I talked about, a xanthan gum, crawfix um, is good as well, and then you can add you know, the percentage accordingly, and then bottle up as 
needed. I don't recommend ever coloring a soap. I know some people do to each his own, but I don't think it's really necessary. The essential oil sometimes can actually change the color of the soap or the cloudiness of the soap. Um, and so can a thickener, to be honest with you. So you can go from like this beautiful amber color to like a white or a creamy color, depending on uh, the fragrance or the essential oil blend that you're using. So that is it for making liquid soap. We're gonna bottle it up, let it sit for at least a week before we use it and then just use as needed. And all we do to bottle this up, I actually use a, um, a cup or a container because this is, <laughs> this is really, really heavy. And to be able to pick it up and pour it into a funnel, um, I, I mean, maybe I'm like a weakling, but it's impossible for me. I have tried, I have failed. So I do not do that. So what I do, I take the largest funnel I have, I bring it as close to my container as I can, and then I'm just going to take my clean empty container and I'm just going to, and I take my time doing this so I um, get the least bubbles possible. You're obviously going to get bubbles, there's really no way to avoid them completely, but if you take your time, um, it definitely makes a big difference. And then before you cap it, you're just gonna spray it with a little bit of alcohol to get rid of those bubbles. And then you're good to go. Oh, and make sure you um, label all of your bottles. So you're gonna label that it's, I typically would write the date that it was made, that it has um, a preservative in it, what the percentage in, what the percentage is, and then if you have a batch number for it. Those are musts always. So if you have multiple gallons of these, you'll know which one that you're pulling from the one that needs to be used first. This would actually be a really good, these thinner recipes, I don't prefer them, but you definitely can make them into like hand soaps with the foamer pumps. These are really good for that. You'd still uh, dilute it a little bit more if you wanted to for like a foamer pump. Okay. And there you have it, a homemade liquid soap, but look at that. I just really wanted to show you up close the color. You can see through it. So we're gonna leave these to sit or sequester for at least a week. The longer you let them sit, the better they get. Just like a cold process or a hot process soap. So there's my liquid soap. I hope you enjoy. Have a great day. See you next Thursday. Bye.